Nineteen forty zero one six. And just now is a uh, fourteen years old. Yeah, has this swelling under the that here, some mandibular swelling this side and to this side. Okay, so now we need to take X-ray to uh, to check what's the cause of the swelling. It could be a sublingual. No? This is a Be Kind to Pets veterinary education video sponsored by Tuapayo Vets where veterinary medicine and surgery come alive to vet students and pet owners. This video is a case study of a dog with neck abscess. Firstly, let us understand what exactly is neck abscess. A neck abscess is a swollen area containing pus accumulation around the neck of the dog. It can be caused by bacterial, fungal, parasitic, or other reasons. Next, let's take a look at the history of this case. The owner reports that the symptoms have been present for 3 days, but the infection is suspected to have lasted for 10. Let's take a look at how we diagnose this case through blood tests and an x-ray. Firstly, blood tests. For bacterial infection, both the total white blood cell count and the neutral field count should go up. But for viral infections, the opposite is true. From this table, you can see that this neck abscess is clearly caused by a bacterial infection. We first take an x-ray of the mini schnauzer and it shows us that the esophagus, barely visible, is constricted and this could explain its inability to eat, while the trachea has also been pushed down which causes its panting and difficulty in breathing. Next, let's take a look at how we treated this dog. Firstly, an incision was made on 19th August 2016 to allow the pus from the neck abscess to be drained out. Next, the dog was given an intravenous drip and then a subcutaneous drip. An IV drip was used at first as it has a faster effect as it does not have to pass through fats and muscles. We dripped it with sodium chloride and Hartman solutions. Next, let's take a look at the discharge of the dog on 22nd August 2016. Unfortunately, the dog was still unable to stand, but its rectal temperature has returned to a normal 38.9 degrees Celsius. You also see that it has a healthy pink color in its tongue, showing us that it has recovered. Okay. You see the cut? Okay, uh, it closed already. Take long, Japan long now, so I just Japan now. Oh. Next, let's take a look at the nursing care involved after the dog returns home. Firstly, because the dog is unable to eat on its own, a syringe containing the food or medicine has to be inserted at the side of its mouth. Next, the neck of the dog has to be stroked in order to help it swallow the food or medicine. The tongue is rubbed and disturbed and the purpose is also to help it fully swallow the food or medicine. This process has to be repeated until all the food and medicine has been completely fed to the dog. That's why you need syrup. Okay, you can eat it. Yes, you can eat it. Oh, you can eat it. Then take it, take it, take it on the throat now. Then you take it on the throat, then you turn it on. You can swallow it. Take it on the throat. There are a lot of things to give. The dog was prescribed with antibiotics, multivitamins, 
like Tate, Metacam, which is a painkiller, and AD canned food. It also has to rest on its chest as it cannot balance on by itself. Conclusion This dog was hospitalized for three days in total, and after these three days, we saw that the swelling in his neck has significantly reduced, telling us that the treatment was likely successful. However, there's still one more step, which is nursing care at home. It is important to follow instructions diligently and accurately if your vet requires your pet to be nursed at home. For more information, you may email the following address or call the following hotlines managed by Tuapayo Vets.